As we get started, I'm realizing I've worn the same type of shirt like every day. Nothing wrong with that. So you look good in it. It's just a white shirt uh, season. So the darker you get, the better it looks. <laughs> That's you know? right. The more dude. tan you get. This is Lacey's brother, so Alex. He's about my age, um, and uh, literally, like, not messing around, the most natural, like, gifted leader when it comes to young people. Uh, in in Milan, Tennessee, how many people do you think are in Milan that live there? Uh, like 7,000. It's a small town, man. So, like, a small town in West Tennessee... Uh, they consistently run a youth ministry of around like a hundred people, a hundred kids, and um, and like the cool kids, right? So, you know, I've been doing youth ministry. We both been doing youth ministry for a long time, but he's much better at it than me. And I feel like, you know, I can say that with uh, and just honor this dude. <laughs> What has to be your favorite part of youth ministry? Like the thing you love the most about it? Man, I would say my favorite part of it is just getting to be a part of the day-to-day -day life like of the kids. And like some kids are more like open with you than others and a lot of them will like invite you into their life. And those are the kids that like I really, really enjoy uh, pastoring because it's like they want your opinion on like everything. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. hey, what do you think about like you know, me going to prom with this person or like, you know, what do you think about like for sure. Just just random stuff. And you know, you don't nobody wants to feel like that they're just the spiritual guidance in somebody's life. Like you want to be a part of people's lives, man. You know, if the only time I ever called you was to ask you a spiritual question, like yeah. What does that even doesn't feel real. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what about you? Man, I I I like exactly what you're talking about. Um I actually like hanging out with students. Um and not feeling like I'm, I'm trying to get them to come to a, yeah. a thing. Because like, yeah. I feel like so much of my job is like trying to get kids, students to like come to an event. And then when they're actually, when they're there, I'm like busy like running the event. But my favorite part of youth ministry is actually hanging out with students. For sure. And you figure, you feel like that would be what you do the most of. But it, it for me, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like that's like the cool part of it. Most of it, I'm just planning events and doing stuff and, yeah know? the prep the prep for all that stuff is absolutely a lot more work than like the night of and then you know you like you spend days and hours prepping for an event and then uh -huh. it's over in an hour and a half yeah like i don't even know what just happened yeah yeah i f i uh i don't know how you feel like this but i hate like knowing that i haven't texted or like reached out to a student in a while but then knowing that like youth night's coming and so being like, hey, I really do care about you, but I really do need you to come to youth. You know what I mean? For sure. You know, because I'm like, listen, I love you. You're cool. But like, hey, you coming to youth? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, I, I think at the end of the day, like, you just do the best you can with what you got there. I mean, because at yeah. the end of the day, like you're saying, when you get in these groups, like the size of what you and I have, it, it's, man, it's tough to remember to do all of that stuff during the week, and then you add in the fact that you're married and you have, you know, all yeah. these other responsibilities going on. But I think once the kids actually come and get there, they can see it and feel it that you do care about them, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, I would say another favorite part uh, of, of youth ministry in general is hanging out, like, outside of, like, the event. Like, one of my favorite things to do, and we live in the South in a small town, we have Friday night football games, and, it, man, the whole town shuts down. And like, you know, That's they cool. don't they don't make me feel yeah. like an outsider at the games. They'll like come and talk to me in front of their friends and stuff, and it's pretty neat. You know, it makes me feel kind of cool, even though I'm totally not cool. <laughs> I'm thirty. I'll be thirty two years old tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, bro. Welcome to the club, man. <laughs> the, the big three two. And like, dude, I feel like we just celebrated like our thirtieth birthdays. Like literally, it felt like I, we just turned thirty. When my remember? Yeah, I do remember. My friend Brooks, you know Brooks, still mm -hmm. he. He told me one time, he said, you're closer to 40 than you are 20. And it hit me. That is not what I want to hear. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> I mean, it's just not yeah. what I want to hear. Hey, how's the culture, the difference in culture and youth ministry between, like, Franklin, Tennessee and, like, New York? I mean, like, New York where you live now. Yeah, that's, like, 
that's such a good question, man. The 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 it's totally different. I feel like um, nobody cares at all that they're at church. Like I people cuss and smoke like smoke weed and try to find a corner and hook up with their girlfriend and like and it, they, there's not a single bit of them that feels bad about it because you're at church, you know? Like, they'll, you know, they'll start going off and, like, just saying a bunch of bad stuff, and they'll, like, grab their mouth, and oh, yeah, sorry, dude, forgot, forgot, you know, you're a pastor. But, um, there, there, just, like, there isn't any, like, um, you know, this, like, I'm supposed to do this because I'm a church thing, you know? And, um, and, they, and they'll ask some questions that I don't feel like people in the South will ask. They'll, they'll ask, you know, I'll prepare this sermon or this whole thing, and I'll get into it, and then someone will, like, Hey, what does it what does it mean to be saved? Is that like going to confession? And you're like, oh, I'm preaching on the you know, the glory of God and blood. You know, they're like, what, how, what does saved mean? You know, you're like, wow. I mean, like, to, I mean, like, I respect like the legitimacy of them being real. Mm-hmm. I like, you know what I mean? Like, these kids, like, we don't have it all together. We don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do I, you know, how do I go to heaven? You uh-huh. know, like, I, I mean, I'd like that. You know what I mean? I mean, because I guess, you know, not living in the Bible Belt, you know, you, the kids don't, they're not, like, trained to be something that they're not. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just really genuinely want to know, like, w- what it's like. And obviously it's, you know, a, a compliment to you because they're drawn. They see something in you that makes them want to be like that, you know. And I mean... I, I kind of like that they're real and they kind of sneak around and do all the thing. At least they're there. Yeah, you know what, what I mean. Saying. Like, I mean, they're coming. They're, I mean, they show up. Yeah, I tell you what, it's done. I'm. It's taught me that I'm not as good of a communicator preacher as I thought I was. I remember the first couple times. You're like, one of the best I've heard, dude. I'll get in there and I'll start going, and then the, you'll you know how kids go. Sure, yeah. watch, and then they're literally like, uh, like, I mean, right in the middle, getting up, walking around, like looking for food. On their phone, it's 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 the most humbling thing in the world. You're like, uh, like, this is, I'm like, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible preacher. So, how much of that <laughs> would you like attribute to like the culture of the South versus the Northeast? Dude, they do not put up with at least ours. Our because we're like right outside the city, and so uh, a lot of that bleeds over. But there is absolutely no like. They're not going to just be quiet and listen to you because you're su- they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. They'll sit down for five minutes and try to be quiet. And if it's not like the real, like if it's not engaging them in a real way, they're just gone. I mean, zoned out, zombie. You know the zombie look. I love it. Gone. So you're like, oh, I can't preach for forty minutes. I got to preach for fifteen minutes, and I have to say exactly what I need to say quickly, anointed, you know, yeah. and then. Done, dude. So, like, in a way, it's like you're getting a, a true, like, value, a true feel on, like, who you are as a preacher. Yeah. And they're, like, letting you know there's no, like, you know, like, I, you know, sermon. I feel like, you know, I feel like sometimes I'll preach on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, and I'll just completely botch it. You know, oh, you just yeah. struggle the whole way through. Yeah. And then you just have the sweetest people come up, and they're like, that was amazing. I'm like, you're lying to me. Yeah. That was not good. I love you know? too. So, like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you've been there, oh, right? Yeah. In the South, I mean, people are just so kind, but like up there, if you don't do good, they just like that sucked, right? Yeah, they just, I mean, and they don't even try. Like they'll get up, <laughs> and they're like in the front row, and then the room's not that big, and they just walk around. They'll go, and we have a little kitchen next to our youth room, so they'll start going looking for food, like opening the fridge. You're like, I'm That's, like, what? what? <laughs> uh, so in closing, uh, <laughs> shut the fridge, yeah. and then we'll, uh, we'll I'm pray. done. You know? Well, let me ask you this. What is one thing, because um, you've been doing youth ministry for a while, man. We've been at this for a minute. There's not a lot of us. For sure. I mean, really, there isn't. A lot of guys that have been doing this for over five, six years, um, like, it just, it's just super rare. Uh, what's one thing that most people have no idea that, like, we deal with on a weekly, daily basis? Like... What's something that like people don't just don't even understand that is part of our life and our job is being like youth pastors? Um, that's kind of tough on us, you know. 
me, me tighten this down. You go ahead. Um, I would say two things. Uh, the first, the first thing I would say is the battle to keep students engaged who do not feel the same um, kind of push from their family. You know what I mean? Like, we have a lot of students that come to our church whose family just, they don't attend church. Not not our church. They don't attend any church. And so their students are trying to do right, and, like, we're in the trenches, like, fighting for them and battling mm-hmm. with them and, like, no, you can't do that. Or, like, hey, church attendance is important. Or, like, hey, yeah, you know, you shouldn't listen to that kind of music. Like, here's some worship music. Or, like, you, you know, you should do all these things. Mm-hmm. And so, and it's hard because, like, you're fighting – that battle and you feel like that it's just you against against everybody you mm-hmm. know and you want to see those kids succeed so bad um and that man that's a day in and day out fight kids from broken homes and from broken families and broken relationships and all these things and you're fighting those things day in and day out and then the second thing that i've really found is a struggle in my i'll be seven years in youth ministry in november is the kids who leave and you felt like you gave them everything, and then they end up walking away from the faith. Mm. And, um, you know, you, you have yeah. to not take it personally, uh, but I do. I always will. And I, I don't know that there's a way that you can not. But, mm-hmm. you know, you see kids who were in your youth ministry two, three, four years, you know, and they graduate out, and you want to see them change the world, right? You know, they're going to just continue to remember all the things you poured into them, but in, in, in reality... You know, it's not like that. And sometimes the world chews them up and spits them out. Man. Man, let's get one more and we got, we're going to go get some food. All right. So, um, man, this has been so good. Like, I don't know about you, but I, it's hard to find stuff like this. Because, uh, like, in youth ministry, you don't, you, you look, you know, especially when you're new, you're looking for help, but you almost kind of feel, like, embarrassed to ask because sure. it's, like, super competitive. Yeah. Um, but what would you tell the... The version of you, like, first couple, like, within your first year of the job. So what would you tell the, the, like, brand new youth pastor version of yourself when you first started? What was some advice that you would give that person, that version of yourself? That students are absolutely nuts, and so you (laughs) need to be patient from the very beginning to the very end. If If you live with the ebbs and flows of the life of a student... And you are hard on yourself when they are down or when you're high on yourself when they are up, you are setting yourself up for failure. Be patient and persistent, and then at the end, I think that you'll win out. Dude, thanks so much. Let's Love go get you, some uh, let's go get some food. Seafood.